Welcome to week one as an introduction to Python. My name is Clark and I'm your instructor. So before we start, you should go ahead and look at the hands-on practice um, zero, uh, which gives you the installation instructions for Python, right? Once you get your Python up and running in your system, the next thing you want to have is a Visual Studio Code. It's a lightweight um, text editor so that you can plug in your Python code and when you do hit the terminal at the end, so this is control tick, tick is the button next to your left um, and that should open up your VS code right? by using the Python keyword space dash dash version. You should see a Python 3.7 or anything that 3.6 and above, right? If you are on 2.0, well, please upgrade to 3.7 as it will have a different syntax to do the code, right? So now you would, uh, when you hit Python only as a keyword, you should be able to access the uh, Python REPL, right? Uh, Python REPL is read, evaluate, print, and loop. So that gives you access to plug in instructions here as well meaning code if you want and if you don't want you can also put it here right and just run this file and the only difference you would now say python space hello.py python is not a compiler unlike c++ and java they need to compile the program first before you can run it um, for python you can just run it right? it's not a transpiler you don't need to translate it from one source code to another it is an interpreter where the written uh, ex uh, instructions, which is the code, you can run it. It is a high level programming language. It's farther away from machine. Uh, it's more human readable. However, that uh, is a trade off with being less performant. Um, it is dynamically typed where you don't really need to define which type of the variable you're going to use. It doesn't need to be like int or string right off the bat. As for the data type, we have the usual integer and float. We do have complex, which we don't need, we need to discuss further. Just it's a basically a combination of a number that's having a real and imaginary part, right? We'll just discuss this if we have a use case. Um, text type, basically a string. Sequence, you have the list, the tuple, right? Um, mapping types, you have the dictionary, your key value pairings, a logical type is also bool. Again, the sequence type, there's a string here because again, you can, um, it's a, a string of characters, it's basically a sequence as well, right? And here is the hierarchy of data type. So in this lecture, uh, we'll try to uh, move along and check on things that we would have an insight on and Let's see how we can progress. We can add additional lecture. So we'll do that now, right? Again, this is for us to avoid uh, boring lecture. So when I see something and I see that it uh, could be explained pretty well in the slides, we'll just move on. And again, you're feel free to ask questions, whether you comment through MS Teams, through the Blackboard. We can have a separate meeting. We'll do that, okay? So this is a summary for this slide. We do have Python as being dynamic, which we mentioned, mentioned already. And it's also a uh, in-between strongly type and weakly type, right? Okay. Okay, we'll move on. Um, not pandas and NumPy are, are basically uh, libraries which you can use with Python, right? So you need you do need to have Python, and when you now have uh, pandas and NumPy, you can basically create this uh, data visualization with just plugging uh, input data, and the data modeling is already uh, given to you. Just have to insert uh, which x and y parameters those data should come into, and this will be discussed um, again in the future weeks. And we do have the different types of operator, um, pretty self-explanatory, so we can move along. And you have questions, um, 
we can do demos. Um, and this one is true, false, none. The, these are basically keywords in Python. The main thing that you have to know about this is if you're going to use a variable name, avoid using this one, right? Because these are reserved keywords that have functionalities, right? Variables and naming. Um, legality of variable names. Um, so there are rules, basically, um, to have um, no spaces. And underscore would be a good way to add that space, right? Can't start with a number, those kind of stuff. And again, for best practice, um, avoid doing, let's say, uh, a three-word variable where you don't put any underscore or camel case, right, or um, snake case, or else it's going to be hard to read. Okay, moving along. These are the basic, um, indicating a prompt. You have the three greater thans, right? Running your Python code. You can follow along with those. Uh, this shows you a uh, value assignment, right? The gist of this is always you'd want to set some values first, as you can see um, on the first few lines, set some value first, and then you can also assign them um, at the same time in one line, right? As you can see, parentheses and separated by comma. Also, the variables are separated by comma, and then you can print each variable. This is a useful way to check um, whenever you get lost, to check the type of your variable because you can dynamically change it, right? You can assign different data types. So you might want to check it from time to time with the type keyword. It's a reserved keyword, right? You can also convert the string or integer by enclosing your variables in the, key, um, the reserve keyword string and int or even float. This is pretty helpful when solving some of the problems. And this demo, um, you can just follow along and this one is just printing uh, stuff out to your uh, console, right? If loop and user input, again, this is just a review, uh, a flow control. So if something is yes, it goes to a certain line of code. If it says uh, the condition is no, it goes to another code, right? So in this example, is it raining? If it is raining, and then it goes to the next one to ask, do you have an umbrella, right? If not, you wait for a while. And if it's still raining, now this is a loop, right? Keeps on going until it's not no longer raining, and then you can go outside and then, okay? And we do have the common operators to um, do the equality, right? We can use this for numbers, strings. If two array, uh, two lists are the same list or objects, we can use these operators. And we do have the if and else keyword. These are reserved keywords as well. Don't forget your colon on the rightmost of your conditional. And also the indentation just after the conditional inside of that scope. If you do have another one, you do L if, right? Here's another code demo. Uh, as you can see on the left hand side, we started now with printing something to the user, right? And next we do want to grab the user input with the, the input keyword. This would now prompt the user in the console and we, it will wait for an input from your keyboard, right? And it will only uh, accept an integer type. And then we can process that after we got two inputs, right? And use the conditional to give us different outputs based on what was evaluated from our input. The for loop, uh, this is the um, a looping uh, for Python, right? 
you iterate over something in a sequence, right? You iterate over a list, a string. So you can do it um, one by one, right? And the for is a reserved keyword and in is a reserved keyword. So what this basically do is for val, this is a temporary variable in sequence. Sequence is the variable that you um, initialize before. So every time we iterate the each element or each value in the sequence, we can grab that value and use that to print out or assign or aggregate inside of our for loop scope. When we say inside of scope, again, this is after the colon, right? And with the indentation, that's part of the for loop scope. Range is very useful. You do have start, stop, and step size, meaning you can start from a certain um, index or position. You can also stop from a certain index or position, right? Um, you can define that with adding uh, numbers or integers there. Just do remember with the stop, if you said stop at 10 um, and your sequence has um, has 10 elements, right? Um, it will do a 0 to 9 instead, right? If your start is 0 and your stop is 10, it will do 0 to 9, okay? A step size, you can do instead of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you can do a 0, 3, right? And let's say, you know, 0, a 1, let's say 3, 5, 7, you can do a step size like that. You can also do it the other way around with, let's say, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0, right? For and else. A while loop. This is now that um, it will keep on iterating until it reaches a certain condition, right? Um, that would exit the loop. So be careful when you set a condition that won't resolve. So you would have an infinite loop. Okay, loop techniques. The break condition is um, good for if we're using a for loop, but we are looking for a certain condition as well, that if we find that or that happens to be true, Let's now go out of the loop because we already find what we're looking for, right? Same goes with the while. We can also use that to break out of your infinite loop if that happens. I mean, I mean if you implemented it in a way. Another reserve keyword that we can use is the continue, right? So we can use that in a conditional statement. And if we do found uh, something to be true with our conditional, we can just continue the loop, right? You can also use that in your while loop. Again, they, there are use cases for this, and for now, we'll just move along. A code demo. Um, one of the important thing that you would see on the top is import random. So we do have a lot of what we call built-in functions in Python where we can just import something right and now use those functionalities so in this case we do import the random module or sometimes they call it library right and what this essentially do is you can basically see a lot of different functionalities for random and we can do a quick google search with that if we don't know what are the built-in methods right with random so if you um grab that random you do have access to methods right um, for example the rand int right you do have a function for that so you can google and you can also look at the uh, help section in your python interpreter right and this gives you more information on how to use and which are which methods are available right so going back to this one uh, this is basically just assigning random values to a num, variable num. 
um, and then you now um, generate random values using the sample if you do have a a range right and you do want only five random numbers and um, you, this one is summing the list and you initialize first this is what you call your um, aggregator so you aggregate all the values here right uh, this is the one that will accumulate all the values so that you would get the total sum right and we can now use the for loop and again the reserve keyword for and in right in what we do want to iterate over the list of numbers which is list underscore num and we want to grab the value for each um, element right and then we want to again accumulate sum by using this formula okay and that's basically how we can accumulate something using a for loop right do remember whenever you're coding or submitting your code always add um, comments as much as possible especially if you're um, just beginning to code it really helps um, the code reviewer the one checking your code to see what your program is doing and until you really get the skill of a readable code right meaning your variables naming and your structure is very understandable that's the time you can do less comments right but for now feel free to uh, add more comments to explain what is happening okay uh, on the right hand side we do have user input and this one checks if um, if you, the input um, the user input if it's a vowel right if it's in the vowels which is in this string right if yes uh, you entered a vowel and good job if no um, you would just get no that's not a vowel try again you enter this one and it keeps looping okay again this program gets a user input and checks that input against the vowels right the vowels variable which has a, a string a string of characters right now we're going to list and tuples right list is basically an array that you can add uh, multiple values and it's an order sequence okay it is regardless of data types um, compared to other languages where you are um, locked into let's say integer data type for your um, values in your list or string data type right or object uh, in Python lists can hold any data type okay and again the way we access um, values in the list is basically adding a square bracket and a number which would designate or um, reference to the a position for that value right and here's an example um, we can store values and we can access by index and you can also use negative index right to access the same values next thing is having a nested list is basically having a 2d list where you now it would now look like this one right if this is not a list um, and then I mean if this is the whole values that you're seeing right now is just a list that's a 2d list right um, a 2d list is also uh, an example of 2d list is just something like this as well a sheet that this is a 2d list a 1d list could be only this a 2d list would be like this Right, 2D list is like this. Um, 1D list could be only like this. Right, so again, a 1D list is just a row, and a 2D list has a um, columns and rows, basically. Okay, and because list has a lot of built in functions as well. These are the things that you should be trying. Um, 
this is one of the core Python list basics that you should know how to use. Um, so try to use them and again you'll get the hang of it and just play around with it and you know um, which one to use uh, in your use case and in which problem, right? So in this code demo, uh, feel free to uh, follow along because this gives you different ways to manipulate a list and again with all data types there are times that we need to just look at it and there are times that we do need to change some stuff or manipulate it and this gives us a way another thing that we'd like to mention is try to practice using this um, slicing so this is a very powerful um, a way to basically extract something from your list to create a, another list so for example I'll just give this one example so one and three right um, it will basically start from here the 24 and then one two three and grab that and now would we'll chop off that uh, list hence slice and returns you a new one okay And then this one is just traversal because list is a sequence. You can do a for loop, right, in the list. You can also use the range to iterate over it. And just be careful of the out of bounds, right? Meaning putting a stop, which is outside of the number of elements that you have, right? Should be number of elements minus one but Python already knows that when you put, let's say, the length of my list, even though, let's say, the length is 10 and the elements is 9, it will only traverse until 9. It all already has this minus 1 there, right? And you can try it out to see for sure. Okay, so things that you should also try on. And again, try this code get stuck or something that is interesting to you, message me, okay? And knowing about the shallow copy and deep copy is useful, not only for Python, but as you go towards different realms, uh, for example, web development, right? Um, shallow copy creates a copy that you have, basically when you change the value, it affects the other uh, list right the original list whereas in deep copy where you create a new list a totally new list from the original list and it helps you uh, make sure that you create a separate entity and not affect the original one though though there are use cases for each of them right um, and we'll discuss more as we encounter them right uh, definitions read them up more definition please read them up uh, tuple similar to list but again we cannot change them think of them as the constant if you encountered constant variables uh, think of tuples as like this one right and assignment is done using the circular brackets or parentheses. Um, yep. So again, we do have some methods, right? Such as count and index. And it is it is the reason for having just a few built-in methods as well is because it is immutable, meaning you cannot really change once we assign values to that. Um, tuple variable, right? Okay, a recap sequences you have range, you have for loop, you can use that. String is a sequence, list is a sequence, tuple is a sequence, right? Um, this one, the import, the import is a reserved keyword where you can import libraries or modules so you can use them. So, well, the reason for that is you don't want to build something that's already been built. For example, the local time, right? You don't want to program and create a program just to get the local time. 
when you can just import that library, right? Mm, okay, RGB, a few functions. Um, I don't, don't know if it's covered here for now. Mm, again, listen tuples, it looks like these, right? Okay, so again, you can reference using a spreadsheet as using your list and tuples. And check with list, right? They are homogeneous and tuples are heterogeneous. Okay. Okay. Another code demo with the tuple, right? The open parentheses. Accessing is the same as the list. You have the numerical value to access the position. You can also slice them up and you can traverse them with the for loops. You can also unpack, right? By using this uh, syntax where you do have like uh, a bunch of variables where you have and then you want to assign your tuple to those variables, right? Traversal, traversal. Okay. Oh, another thing that's useful here is um, when you do a print, when you do this F and follow the syntax, right? You can basically insert a string. And again, the curly braces helps you add a variable and print that as a string, okay? And again, if we're not sure of um, the things that we see in the code, it's always, always helpful to um, Google that. So for example, if I don't know that, let's say print Python, right? First thing I wanna make sure is, um, I'm using, let's say, 3.7. Um, 3.8 is fine, as long as it's not 2.0. And let's see if we can do a quick search. Let's say F, All right? So this gives me a nice heading to search. Oh, it's called a formatted string literal. So uh, I can include values of Python expressions. Again, what happened here is, oh, I have a variable i, and then I can insert that to my string how, again, using the curly brace in that expression. So not only variables, so if I have something that can return, for example, mat.py, mat is a library and pi is a method for that mat library, this would, um, this would return the pi value and we can also print that out. As you can see, this is the result, okay? And that's the end of it. So we go back a bit, and just to summarize, we go through the basics and some definitions. Uh, the important part takeaway is whenever you see that you don't understand, do the steps, read again, uh, try to code it, Google it as your peers, then you can ask uh, me or, your, or the TA to help you out. Okay, uh, this is for week one and we'll check if this content is good and We'll add more as we go along the way. Thank you.